Hi, I'm Tom, and I'm back in front of my landing radiator to tell you that I've finally gotten my radiator temperature sensors working. In this video, I'll talk about how I finally identified and fixed the problems with both the hardware and software so that my sensor is giving a reading closer to these professional testo clamps. I've already recorded a couple of videos on this subject, so I do recommend you watch them as that will give you some context about what I'm talking about. Now, when I last recorded a video from this rather uncomfortable position, I was really dismayed to find that my temperature sensor didn't match the testo clamps at all. In fact, it was as much as five degrees out and the delta T recorded across wasn't even the same. Since recording that video, I've spent some time investigating the problem and I'm finally pleased to say that I've gotten the temperature sensors to the accuracy that I need. Getting them up to that desired accuracy took a few passes and I'll talk you through those now. I started by checking that the NTC probes were actually outputting the expected resistance and I accomplished that by using an ice bath and an actual thermometer. Once I was happy that the output matched my expectations, I then proceeded to attach the NTC to one of the radiator tails and I discovered two things. One, using a thermal paste like this between the probe and the tail resulted in a much higher reading. And two, the position of the clamp on the tail actually made a difference. The closer the clamp was to the valve on the radiator, the lower the reading it reported. So by having an inch or two between my clamp and one of the testo clamps meant that the two were never going to agree. To compensate for this, I started using both of my testo clamps and by positioning my NTC probe between them and splitting the difference, I found that the readings were actually quite close. Another thing I realized was that I wasn't using the ferrule crimper correctly. So what I was doing for the little ferrule clamp was I was crimping the plastic part and not the metal part. What's that expression? It's all the gear and no idea. So once I had done all that, I had one final crushing realization. And that was that my software calculations were actually wrong. Mild shock. To develop my software, I was using one of these. And this is a Nordic NRF 52840 development kit. This is a pretty full featured board, basically does everything. It's got NFC, all sorts of buttons, scanner, oh, there's all sorts of doodads on this. But this is what I was using. And one of the characteristics of this is that its voltage output, the VDD, was three volts. And that perfectly matched the zero to three volt range of the analog to digital converter on the board. What I didn't realize was that the output on these Zhao C boards was actually 3.3 volts and that completely skewed the resistance readings I was getting. Every day is a school day. So with thermal paste on the tails and my corrected software, I am now happy to say that my sensors are finally reading very, very close to the testo clamps. So with the sensor corrected, the clamps reattached with thermal paste. We can see now that if we check the delta T between the two testo clamps, it's coming out at about 3.7. And if we switch across to my utility now, we'll see that the delta T is at 3.2. So they're very, very close. The Temperature sensor recordings are also quite close. We've got 38.1 on the return, 41.9 on the flow. And if we jump again, we've actually got 38.3 and 41.6. So the readings now are much, much closer. As I explained earlier in the video, there is a slight difference just based on the position of the clamps. Uh, so the, the lower down this goes, the warmer the pipe actually is. And I think it's something to do with how the radiator is drawing more heat uh, from the tail. So again, they're never going to match exactly, but they're now close enough 
that these readings are actually reasonably accurate for my purposes. So now that I'm happy with the sensor, I have to go around and upgrade the other nine radiators. So I'll have to re-flash the software onto each of the sensor units and just make sure I've got enough thermal paste when I'm attaching the probes. So once I've got all the other radiator sensors updated, I will be giving the balancing another go. I'll definitely record a video on that. So if you're interested at all, yeah, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. That's it for this video. If you found it interesting, please do like and subscribe. If you've any questions or you want to know a little bit more, please use the comments. Otherwise, that's it. I'm Tom and thanks for watching.